Thank you so much for that uh, very nice welcome. I'm really, really very excited to be, uh, be back here this year after quite a few years before to share a few thoughts. And uh, let me start with a very simple status. Yesterday, we learned all about the status of our in industry, the numbers, the trends, etc. And then suddenly, if you look a little bit more precisely, you may ask, is this all? Or do we miss a few things? Uh, where is, I'm missing, for instance, that little thing, yes. We always take the risk of missing things, uh, which, yes, which occurred to me a few months ago when I realized uh, when we speak about publishing, about the book business in general terms, and if you look at the reality of how people are using these products, most of the data are not including all the self-publishing, or most of the self-publishing. Uh, many concepts are not really embracing what happens to the book business in Spotify or Webtoons, or the tone is. I'm not sure if you know what the tone is, you will discover. There is a clear book component in Netflix. They go after the same authors. Um, when I do my global ranking of the publishing industry, I realized suddenly last year, I'm missing a lot of companies, starting with Amazon, who are very relevant players in producing as publishers, etc., etc., etc. So I came up with these questions um, last fall and thought, I need to do some research and the first findings I want to share with you. And incidentally, uh, my old pal and teacher, Mike Schatzkin, at the same time, roughly, um, wrote in a blog post the book publishing business in which I have spent my working life since the early 1960s is disappearing. And Mike is certainly a forward-looking person and not someone who is fond of regrets. So what, I, what am I talking about? My goal is, in the first half of my talk, to confuse you a little bit, and in the second half of my talk, hopefully, to provide some guidance. Let's start with a few cases. This little figurine is big like this in reality, and is the key, in technical terms and in uh, metaphorical terms, the key to a publishing venture in Germany, aiming to create a community of two to six-year-old book lovers. Yeah? And that is a little bit the essence of a book publishing venture. And it is big, as we will discover later on. A similar thing happened a few years ago, uh, driven by two Italian women who founded a community for young girls, rebel girls. And out of that very unlikely idea of doing a Silicon Valley startup in publishing for girls of 8 to 12 year old, uh, resulted eight and a half million books that they sold in 110 countries and 15 languages. And they turned that success into a community, webtoons. Uh, we have neighbors with two daughters of 16-year-olds, and one of the daughters is a really avid reader of books. And of course, she was also tapping into, net, uh, into webtoons. That stream is something totally different, but not cannibalizing her book reading. It's complementary. Yeah? And that is a platform for online literature with 90 million users worldwide. Yeah? And it was founded not the day before yesterday, but almost 20 years ago in 2006, unlikely as a fan fiction community. And at the same time, or even three years before in 2003, 
almost the same thing, the same concept had been invented in Shanghai, in China. And it grew into an enormous community. And today, that is one of the most exciting publishing ventures that we are facing. Uh, I said, uh, Netflix, series, series uh, episodes, seasons, followers instead of individual readers have become a fixture because platforms play a major role in whatever we should call the publishing industry. And um, when we look into how, especially young people, who are very important to us, how they use these streams of content, we recognize totally different patterns of uh, consumption. It's snacking here a bit, there a bit. It's getting access whenever, wherever I want. It is very much about serialization of content, not just two covers around one story as in a book. It's a continuous stream of content in multi-format presentations and almost always consumed on the smartphone. But the really mind-boggling reverse is that Gen Z, the young generation, is now using a Chinese uh, social media platform, TikTok, to promote, no, not streams, not uh, serialization, but physical copies of books. We learned yesterday, unwrapping a book can be a topic in a TikTok video of 30 seconds. But it is about a physical book, which means somehow, not only we are in a uh, hybrid world, but we are in something with many very dynamic facets. Uh, here, what is the goal of these videos? We make books seem personal through a Chinese social media platform. A little bit weird. 10 years ago, I drew a map based on the best available statistics on publishing in the traditional sense that I could find. And that was the world in publishing according to these numbers. So you see a few very big countries in the north, the US, Germany, France, a little bit Spain, China, which represent publishing. Today, we have an entirely different landscape, an entirely different geography of the book business. It's about Canada, it's about Korea, it's about China. Out of uh, Barcelona, we own, not only have Planeta and Grupo Editorial, we also have World Reader, which is a platform and a community for Africa and the Global South in digital reading. So suddenly, really, our world has changed. So back to the global ranking, which I do for 15 years, where we try to portray and understand the 50 largest publishing companies that we have. And that was a statement that I just gave you, the 50 largest publishing companies, which is wrong, which is plain wrong. We are not able to represent the 50 largest because we don't have any data that we could work with for all those other ventures, uh, for most of the other ventures that I just showed to you as case studies. Yeah? So we are missing a lot. And in most of the statistics, the data that we consume when we try to make sense of our industry, we are having pictures like this, uh, which are just portraying the traditional author goes with a book to a publisher, who goes to a wholesaler, who goes to a, um, a, a bookshop owner, who then finally brings the book to the consumer. And if we look at these statistics, uh, not only in revenue, but also from the perspective of a consumer, 
So looking not at the euros and dollars, but at the copy sold, we see that that world is the dotted line in a continuous decline. We could get data for, Ger for the German language markets. Yeah? And uh, here we uh, took the annual top 1,000 best-selling fiction titles. And the number of overall copies is in continuous decline since 2012. <laughs> And guess what? Here, Corona, the pandemic, didn't make any big difference. That's a very basic fundamental trend. But at the same, and we see also uh, that the backlist. So these are the titles uh, from 100 to 1,000. That is slightly growing. And if we would have the data for the complete backlist we would see that the top bestsellers are shrinking in their share, and the backlist, which has no money to be promoted, which gets much less attention from the professionals, that is the solid bedrock of the industry. And at the same time, it only reflects a portion, from a consumer's perspective, of what people get in. In France, for instance, uh, one book in four books sold is a comic or manga. That only figures partly in uh, the statistics. And if we add the digital stream, the Webtoons type of content, I'm sure that's even more. Because that's million copies of where, we, where you don't have a stream, but have really one copy, two copies, three copies, four copies. Yeah? Uh, what we have, I love this picture, over there in the corner, that's a book found on Mars. The picture is from NASA. Yeah? Uh, it's an authentic, because NASA is not lying to us. It is a little book, like this, that they found on Mars with their rover and they portrayed it, they took a picture. So instantly, they understood the joke about it. We have one version of what a book X is in our mind. And they said, even on Mars, we found a book. However, we are not alone. That's not the only form, the only format that we should have in mind when we think about a book. If you go to the Amazon website and uh, look up a title for a children's book or whatever, many books that are not just a novel, you see how many different versions here are presented. We have a Kindle, we have an audiobook, we have a hardcover, we have an audio CD, we have Kindle Unlimited, we have streams uh, on other platforms, Spotify, whatever. Yeah? And they are representing or they are connecting with each different types and different ways of consumption and different technical formats and different business models. And all that, all these different appearances are what we call books and the industry around the book business or the publishing business. How big is this? Now I'm starting to switch from the confusing part, hopefully, to the guidance part. In Amazon, we have Amazon Publishing, which is not so big, Kindle Direct Publishing, which was, by the way, launched Kindle Direct, so the self-publishing arm, in the same year of 2007, when the Kindle was introduced as the e-book platform and device. And then we have Audible for the audiobooks and Kindle Unlimited. Now, no one knows exactly the turnover made by Amazon from their book releasing, producing, dissemination, uh, and uh, related activities. We have just a few very fra uh, frag uh, fragmented numbers. One is, month after month, Amazon is paying out 
45, 47 million dollars as bonus payments to authors in the self-publishing program uh, of Kindle Unlimited. So do the math. 45, 12 months a year, it's about half a billion dollars. That's not the compensation for everything to these authors. Uh, we have a few um, estimates, reasonable estimates, that the real payout, not, not just the bonus, but the real uh, uh, payouts for the Kindle Unlimited to these authors is 200 to 250 million dollars per year. So that would equal two and a half billion of turnover just given to authors. That is not yet including the royalties where between 30 and 70 percent of every dollar euro of purchase, purchase value goes to authors. So we can assume, going back in a quick link to my ranking, that somehow the Amazon self-publishing turnover is roughly uh, one of the largest publishing companies in the world in trade publishing on par bet somewhere between Ashet Global and Penguin Random House Global. We are missing this. When we look into normal standard best-selling lists, they differ extremely strongly with Amazon's lists. On the one hand, because one is counting the turnover, and I believe, I don't know, because it's uh, very opaque and not very clear, but I believe in Amazon they do a count of units consumed, which would make sense if you want to include not only copies sold, but also Kindle Unlimited, all these subscription things. Yeah? So that is big. And the one angle and the other angle produces totally different uh, worlds of bestsellers. The tone is, how big is this, is a startup based in Berlin. Uh, they sold in the meantime since um, roughly 10 years two, five million boxes. This is a Tony box like this. It's so simple that a two-year-old can use it, take ownership of that reading device. Uh, the, each book, in brackets, is one of these figures, figurines, and they sold 63 million of this. But there are also licensing partners, like a trade paperback company. They're taking licenses and just invented their own format uh, with 200 international leading traditional publishing companies, like Disney, Hasbro, Mattel, Penguin, Random House, Macmillan, you name it. They have, uh, go, uh, go back to Webtoon. They have a community of 85 million users. They have revenue turnover of not very far from $1 billion. And when you see their parent companies, Navis, uh, total revenue, the dark blue on the right is almost exclusively all the Webtoon revenue. So that is the growth segment of that Korean company. That changed what is a book. And that's very important. That's perhaps my key message, and that's why I made the silly joke about the Mars book. That changed what became a book. If we looked at Ebooks. They started, as I mentioned, in 2007 when Amazon rolled out the Kindle and Kindle Direct Publishing. And we all thought and asked ourselves, how big will ebooks be? And then there was a peak in 2013, 14, and since then ebook revenue was declining. And so everybody said in the, in the book business, oh, they have plateaued, digital fatigue, all these things. No. Aside from these pure digital copies of printed books in digital formats, totally different things evolved. Authors self-publishing, writing and reading platforms like Wattpad, serialization, 
uh, Wattpad became suddenly, had started as a fan fiction platform, became an author and writing platform, and then transformed into Wattpad Studios. Because they recognized their authors could generate content that you could use for movies, TV series, games, whatever. Uh, all the hybrid things like TikTok in the communication and all the multi-format, multi-channel, multi-business models. So suddenly, character-driven, that's an angry bird, which f fits also in that pattern, character-driven, serious, audience-driven things formed new universes, sub-universes, segments, if you wish, alongside the traditional book. And that means we have suddenly many functionalities, many formats, many shapes, etc. Fifteen years ago, I wrote a piece, and that was really triggered by the launch of the Kindle the year before. I wrote a piece uh, with the title Ripping Off the Cover. It was published in Logos, which is an academic journal. Um, and I, uh, I said, wait a moment, if I look at these new e-books, I think we see a shift of paradigms from the book to the library, from the container to the format, from individual items to linked bodies of content, and from individual readers to communities of users in networks. If you translate that academic wording into more direct and, and, and pragmatic things, you see you have, and these are all quotes from that paper, uh, books have been opened to multiple usages. Uh, and at the end of the day, very quickly, you must ask, what are we doing with a book as consumers? Are we buying that book or are we just getting access to it? which is the, the, uh, the difference between the book as a container, I buy it, or the library, I go to the library, I get access by my library card or by whatever, and that's a totally different universe, taking access in, instead of taking ownership. We thought e-books were just a new format, but it, was much, uh, something, it became very quickly something much more complicated. Uh, it became a strong additional component of a publisher's output, at least in the English language, where ebooks represent roughly uh, around 20% of revenue. But for small publishers in small markets, in Austria, in Slovenia, or even in France, which is not a, a small market, ebooks are much less important in that regard. But at the same time, Self-publishing, webtoons, etc. they are there with the same presence as in other markets. Uh, so we have huge difference between one market and another market, between English language, Western European markets, Asian markets. We are talking more about Korea in a moment, in the next session. So suddenly, the entire grid, the entire functionality, what is the format? It's come from... Uh, author to reader, there have been many other actors instead of publishers and retailers who uh, come into the space and having relevance and act, uh, activities relevant to the book and to reading. The business model is cross-media, etc., etc. So suddenly, the industry of publishing shifts from producing stuff to creating services for readers. And that's a major fundamental shift. Our colleagues from the IT, from the uh, digital technology, they know it because IT software used to be sold. You had a CD-ROM of your MS Office um, uh, uh, software, and now you buy access to it. So um, um, software as a service has become a standard in software. In uh, professional publishing, you know, Reuters, Thomson, in educational publishing, more and more often, access-driven, service-driven offers, platform-driven offers have replaced a good portion of the product-driven things. 
and that is right now about to happen in the trade business. So producing is, uh, is, getting, is becoming servicing. That means not everything is under one roof of the big publishing company. It's distributed, it's network shaped, it's connected. The bigger the better, well, perhaps three, four, half a dozen global companies can just say, okay, we are so big, we can maintain what we, uh, the, the ways uh, that we uh, had to do things like in the past. But scale today in the service sector can be very fluid. Print is not leave it, uh, leading the pack, but the mix of very different things. Uh, warehouses are important for the print, but organizing access, connecting with the, uh, with the consumers, that's for the continuous process, the real key to the future. So why am I emphasizing this? As long as we just look at the print sales or ebook sales data as the only in the indicators or KPIs, we are not really having a good map that allows us successfully to navigate these uncharted territories. That's a very clear message, I hope. And I'm in the process of turning that, what I just showed to you, into a kind of a paper report. It won't be just one report. I will do a first release in early July. Go to my website, register for the newsletter, then you, become, uh, you will get a message. Uh, there will be a first iteration which roughly covers what I discussed today, and then there will be one or two more subsequ uh, subsequent iterations in fall to round up the picture for the first thing. Thank you very much. I hope it was interesting. <laughs>